I think we're either going to look back on today as the day that Skynet essentially got its start and it was the beginning of the end, or we're going to look back and we're going to say that's when life got so much cooler. And of course, today is the day that we've all been waiting for, or maybe just me anxiously waking up every morning going, is GPT-4 going to be released today? Now, if you haven't been paying attention, GPT-3 is a model released by OpenAI that is a text AI model. To put it simply. Now, nobody really cared until ChatGPT was released on November 30th, 2022. And it was so user friendly and allowed people to see the value of this so clearly that it quickly became the most popular tech app of all time. Now, we still had people that looked at the output of GPT 3 and said, This is boring. This is mundane. This is not going to replace anybody. But these people failed to look at what is the natural progression of tech, which is that it consistently gets better at an alarming rate. And so that's what's happening with GPT-4. If we have, we have more parameters going into the model and it's actually going to perform better than chat GPT, possibly in a world changing way. Now today I'm gonna to break down what the difference is. I'm gonna show you what people have already been using GPT-4 uh, to do. And I'm also gonna show you how you can get access to GPT-4. But first, I teach you how to replace your entire org chart in your business with AI tools. So be sure to subscribe to the channel if you want to learn how to make 10 times more in one tenth the time. All right, let's get into it. We're going to cover what GPT-4 is, what can it do, why is it better than GPT-3 and how much, how do you get access and what new tools are being released. So first things first, it's multimodal, which means it can actually read images. If you're wondering what you'd use that for, imagine that you're blind and you can't see just like a normal person might use a translator when they're listening to a different language, a blind person might translate their environment right in front of them. Because GPT-4 can not only take that picture and tell them what is in it, but can explain the context around that. So here's an image that illustrates it well. Here is an iPhone plugged into a VGA connector. Now, if you're not old enough to remember this, it's what we used to plug our monitors in with. It's an old plug that nobody really uses anymore now that we have HDMI, but an iPhone is plugged into it. Now, the AI not only could tell that a VGA connector was in this picture, but here's the cool part. They asked it, what is funny about this image? And the AI knew contextually what was funny. It knew this is funny because it's a new technology, an iPhone plugged into an old cord, something that you would never see out in the wild. And so you might think a computer could identify each one of these, but the fact that it can tell that that's abnormal and think that that's the funny part of the image, that kind of blows my mind. Let me show you another one. Here on the left is a drawing, a mock-up of a website. Now, they put this into GPT-4, and again, it can read images. So it created HTML for a website mock-up of this. This means if you want to create apps or you want to create web apps or websites, you can literally hand draw it out. And then GPT-4 is going to be able to just turn that into HTML and you can go live on your page. It's kind of a game changer, guys. Like this is going to be a world we haven't lived in before. So here's Ben Tossel from Twitter. He has a great newsletter. He says, I just watched GPT-4 write code for a Discord bot, debug and read documentation, look at images and describe them in detail like that, create website code that works, WTF. Now let me show you another one. One thing that GPT-4 has is better contextual understanding, more creativity and more human-like output. So if you've seen generic GPT-3, outputs or chat GPT outputs and you think that's not as good as a human, let's see if it's actually better and more creative. So this is somebody who tried to get pickup lines from GPT-3 and GPT-4. So number one, we have, imagine I'm a girl on my dating profile. I have the sentence, let me know when the reservations are made, write a creative and flirty response to this and try to pick me up. Good challenge for a machine, right? To see, can this stuff replace humans? And what we get in GPT-3, the old version, remember, we get Hi there, I couldn't help but notice your message about making reservations. I'd love to take you out to a fancy dinner and make sure those reservations are made ASAP. How does that sound? Pretty boring, right? You might not even get the date with that. Let's take a look at GPT-4 and how much better it is. Same prompt, here's the answer. Hey there, I've got reservations at the cozy corner of chemistry tonight. It's a unique spot where the main course is laughter, the side dish is a sprinkle of flirtation, and dessert is a sweet connection. Don't worry, I've booked the best seat in the house right next to me. Let's make this a date to remember, shall we? So it's a little bit corny, but you can see how much more creative and playful that is than the old version. And so just imagine everything that you can apply this to and how much better outputs we're going to get from this, okay? So GPT-4, it can generate up to 25,000 words of text. It can write code in all major programming languages. Uh, it can read images and it has better contextual understanding. So basically more like a human. Now this is already running on Bing. So you're going to get search results from GPT-4 if you're using Bing search. But what else can you do? 
Uh, Amar here says he coded in 20 minutes in JavaScript, which he knows nothing about Snake the game. Again, if you remember Nokia phones, they had Snake game on it. Now, I thought that was pretty cool in 20 minutes, but then Jenny uh, posted this with Pietro actually created Pong in under 60 seconds. So you can now, with no coding knowledge, create actual games in under a minute. Insane. So just the speed from idea in your head to reality has been reduced from like years to months to weeks to days to hours and now to minutes. That's what's happening with AI is it's making that shorter and shorter. So the thing is that you still have to know what you want to create. So Benedict says the paradox of ChatGPT, in theory, you can use it for anything because it's trained on everything. But in reality, at least the way we see it now, you can only use it for things where you already know the answer. And what he means is like, you don't know what you don't know. And so the internet gave us access to infinite knowledge, but if that was the answer, we'd all be billionaires with six pack abs, right? You still have to know what you're doing. And that's the thing about AIs. You still have to know what you're doing to use it productively. And so we actually have a program called Money Toaster Monthly. It's a very low monthly fee you can get in. We're actually gonna walk you through New tools every single day, how we're implementing AI into our businesses to get more done in less time. But by that, I mean like make 10 times more output in one tenth the time. Just insane. If you want to check that out, go to Money Toaster Monthly. We're going to be following along with GPT-4, doing all the research for you so you don't have to worry about it and showing you how to replace your org chart one by one with AI tools. Now, what else can GPT-4 do? Let's think about how you would use this in a business environment. Well, Khan Academy, Here's the thing guys, GPT-4 has already been out for a couple months. People just weren't allowed to talk about it because it wasn't public. So Khan Academy has already been building on this. They now have their own coach called Khan Migo that is built on top of GPT-4. And now when you're in there learning, you have your own personalized one-on-one -on -one coach. So every business that's in the learning environment, every coach, every consultant, even every SaaS product, you're gonna get your own one-on-one -on -one tutor. Now we're already doing that, building out our custom chatbots uh, inside Money Toaster Monthly. It's very cool, but there's actually like unlimited use cases of it. So I wanted to show you this weird one. Um, Josh Pigford is building a, a finance product, maybe, and he needed to find the information for a credit card charge. It just says Torchies, Wads, Westminster, CO. And ChatGPT was actually able to find out exactly what the charge is. Like you ever have a charge in your credit card statement, you don't know what it is. It found out exactly what it was and then it fed it back in JSON format to a software so you know exactly where your charges are coming from. Here's another one that you might not think of. Uh, it says, do not pay is working on using GPT-4 to generate one-click lawsuits. Is this for better or worse? I'm not sure, it depends who you're using them against. But you can sue Rover Callers for $1,500. So it says, imagine receiving a call, clicking a button, call is transcribed, and a thousand word lawsuit is generated. GPT 3.5 was not good enough, but GPT 4 handles the job extremely well. So you can see we're now in territory that we haven't seen before. We can do things that GPT 3.5 just wasn't quite good enough for. Here's Intercom. They've actually, because they saw the writing on the wall, rebuilt their whole company around AI and GPT 4. So it says, please meet Finn, a world first and perhaps our most important release to date powered by OpenAI's new GPT-4 and Intercom's proprietary ML tech. I mean, kind of the irony of this, guys, is that anybody's going to be able to build a ch customer support chatbot in literally like 30 seconds. I did one this morning. And so Intercom's coming out with this, but we'll see if they can actually survive. So this is ChatGPT for customer service, um, which is pretty cool. And you can define the parameters. Like you can tell it what you don't want it to talk about and things like that. Um, here's Ben Parr. He says, huge news in AI. Google just launched generative AI across all Google Workspace, Gmail, Docs, Sheets, Slides, Images, everything. So this isn't GPT-4. This is Google's own AI, but I'm just very curious about like, everybody thinks that OpenAI is winning the race here just because we haven't seen consumer level products from Google yet, even though it's built into all their tech already. And so I think they're just going to come out and just like a tidal wave, just take over the AI space. And what I'm really looking forward to, because I have to do lots of presentations, is the Slides feature, which they have released uh, in preview form, Google will be coming out with AI and all their products. So Google Docs, Google Sheets, Google Slides. In a couple of weeks, most likely, you're going to be able to use all of these with AI, which is going to be absolutely incredible and another game changer. Now, this all sounds cool and gimmicky and novel, but like, does this really matter to humanity? And the thing is, yes, AI is going to be able to discover things that we didn't even realize were possible. So Dan here says, uh, GPT-4 does drug discovery. Give it a currently available drug. It can find compounds with similar properties, modify them to make sure they're not patented, purchase them from a supplier, including sending an email with purchase order. So it can do the whole thing. So it can, AI is going to be able to do, you know, cancer research, drug discovery, um, figuring out just like 
secrets of the universe that we don't know as humans because we're not smart enough to synthesize all of humanity's collective knowledge just in one go, which AI can do. So that's the crazy part is like, if you learn how to use these tools, guys, it's gonna be in a world that's unrecognizable. And we just saw ChatGPT come out in November 30th, 2022, and it's already changed the world in ways that we couldn't have foreseen. And the rate at which people are shipping products is just insane. And real quick, how to get access to ChatGPT with GPT-4. If you are a ChatGPT Plus customer, you can come in here and you're just gonna change the model up top. Now, if you don't see it up there, just log out and log back in and it should pop up. Do you wanna try GPT-4? Now, the other way to get it is through the API, but you have to join the waiting list for that. And so again, in Money Toaster Monthly, we're gonna stay up to date on all that, specifically in the context of running your online business. We're gonna show you how to replace yourself in each piece of the organization so you can operate like you have a team of 25 or 50, but it's one or two or three people in your business. So you can scale 10 times as much as one tenth the time as you. So I hope you guys like this quick run through of GPT-4. I'm gonna go play with it a little more and you can be sure that we're gonna keep uh, reporting on this. So be sure to subscribe to the channel. If you want to get more, go check out moneytoastermonthly.com. If you want to follow along and learn how to implement this in your business, that's all for today. I'll see you on the next one.